Here on Shell Bear Games, we've been traditionally very focused on video games, console games, PC games, etc. But today, we're going to go back in time a little bit, a little bit old school, and we're going to be talking about tabletop RPGs, specifically Dungeons and Dragons. I've been playing D&D for a couple of years now. I've been a player character in a campaign that's been ongoing for a while with my old uni friends, a way for us to keep in contact as we no longer live in the same city and not even in the same country. <laughs> And I've also a few months ago started DMing a campaign in person, which has been very fun. Now, I've been playing 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, which you can see all the books for on the shelf behind me. But there are, as it, the name implies, many older versions of D&D. And as is a little bit topical, with Stranger Things Season 4 coming out very recently, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, which was the second version of the rules. When I moved into this house a couple of months ago, we explored the attic to see what the previous owners had left behind for us to deal with. Uh, amongst a lot of junk, we also found some treasures. I would like to present to you Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> as well as the rule books, there's also three little campaign books, which is these small um, books, but very cool. I thought it might be cool just to have a closer look at some of these books and talk a little bit about what I intend to do with them. So we'll head over to the table. So I thought I would start us off with the Player's Handbook, arguably the most important of all of the books. So we have 5th edition Advanced D&D, um, mostly focus on this one, but if there's anything that would be interesting to compare, I will whip this bad boy back out. All right, so first of all, I love this. The previous owner, we've got tracking of some numbers from this character for the cleric. This sticker shows up a few times across the books. So it says here, reprinted in the UK, February 1985. Character creation is definitely very different. So we're starting off with all the different stats and there are like six minimum intelligence for a halfling character, seven minimum intelligence for a gnome character. So a bit more restrictive in how you make your characters. Now this I think is the interesting bit. So here we have each of the classes that exist in this edition. So we have Cleric, which has a subcategory of Druid. Uh, then we have Fighter with the subcategories Paladin and Ranger. Then we just have Magic User, which has the subcategory of Illusionist. Uh, thief, which could also be an Assassin, and then a Monk. And that is it. <laughs> that is all you're getting. <laughs> and interestingly, it's also restricted by your race. So yeah, if you're if you want to be a cleric, you have to be half elf, half orc, or human. So there must be some human in you. Or you can't be a cleric. <laughs> Ooh, which is the most restrictive of the races? So you can be, as a half orc, you can be a cleric, standard fighter, or a thief or assassin. Ooh, we've only got two yeses for halflings. So halflings, you're either a standard fighter, or you're a standard thief, and there's no other options for you. <laughs> so all the available races, yep, yeah, that is it. So dwarves, elves, gnomes, half elves, halflings, half orcs, and humans, and that's all your player races. Beautiful illustrations up in here. Love it. <laughs> Minimum fees for assassination. <laughs> the level of the victim. Oh, that's amazing. Now this is interesting. We're towards the end of the book. We're in the appendix here. So this is appendix two, bards. Now I'm just I'm just gonna have to read this to you because this is just like if you want to play a bard. In this edition, you have to work for it. You must be human or half elf. Uh, there's certain dexterity scores and whatnot that you need to have. Um, yeah, but this, is, this is how you get to be <laughs> a bard. Bards begin play as fighters. They must remain exclusively fighters until they have achieved at least the fifth level of experience. Anytime thereafter, and in the event prior to attaining the eighth level, they must change their class to that of thieves. Again, sometime between 5th and ninth level of ability, bards must leave off thieving and begin clerical studies as druids. But at this time, they are actually bards and under druidical tutelage. Bards must fulfil the requirements in all the above classes before progressing to Bard Table 1. They must always remain neutral, but can be chaotic, evil, good or lawful neutral, if they wish. So also in the appendix, we have, separate to spellcasting, psionics. So seems to be an additional thing that you can do where there's certain like innate psychic powers that your characters can have um which is interesting i guess you can allow for other classes to do a bit of magic that way then we've got our good old alignment graphs and all the planes quick reference sheets for things your spell lists and then possibly the funniest thing about this book 
Okay, we're at the end. That's the, oh yeah, you can get, get your magazine. Um, and what page number, what page number were we at here? Okay, that was 126. And then we flip over here. Hey, we're on page 97 and it exactly repeats the last, like, 30 pages of the book <laughs> before we get back to the final pages with your magazine again. <laughs> Which I find fascinating because the, it fits in the binding. It's the right thickness. So how are there so many extra pages? <laughs> now, I don't think the DM's guide is the most exciting one. Let's have our little comparison of the two. DM's guide, advanced and fifth edition. Yeah, this one, this one was well loved. <laughs> there you go, here are these stickers again. <laughs> So this was printed in the US, revised edition, December 1979. So this is a older one. So this was oh, so take back to it. This is why if you're ever like archiving old books, you don't use tape because <laughs> look at the mess. Oh. A bit more, I guess, about you know, making your characters and things. So we have sort of ages for different. We've got variations. So we've got aquatic elves, drow, gray elves, high elves, wood elves. Here we have, oh, two monster manuals. La, la, la. So let's see, when was this one printed? Printed in the US. Oh, we haven't got a date. Oh, 1979. There we go. A little bit of explanation on them. And then there we go, straight into our monsters. The illustrations in here are just glorious. Like, some of them <laughs> are obviously really good. Some of them are just like, you know, brain mole. Let's have a brain mole. Sounds cool. But here is the good old Demogorgon, a two-headed baboon demon. Right, now this I find fascinating, right? We hit dinosaurs, right? There are dinosaurs in the modern version, but there's only a few. In fifth edition, these are our dinosaurs. We've got Allosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Plesiosaurus, Pterodon, Triceratops, Triceratops, and Tyrannosaurus Rex. Handful of dinosaurs that you can work into your D&D campaign. Second edition rules, whoa, so we've got Anatosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Antrodomius, Apatosaurus, Archaeonesaurus, Brachiosaurus, Comarosaurus, Saturosaurus, I can't pronounce half of these, but yeah, dinosaurs all the way down. Um, just, just dinosaurs. You want more dinosaurs? We got more dinosaurs. <laughs> if you want a dinosaur heavy campaign in this edition, you are set. <laughs> We've got all our dragons. Beautiful. Like, look at this werewolf. He's not scary, I'm sorry. He's doing his best. Now this owl bear, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but what is this? What is this? Who is this? <laughs> These are the three campaign books that we also found with the other books. So this one, I will not be showing any more of other than that, uh, because I have the intention of running this on Twitch stream at some point uh, with some friends. So I don't want to reveal anything that happens inside this story, but um, there we go, let's get rid of that. But the other two, fair game. So <laughs> we have, first of all, Slave Pits of the Undercity. So they have maps, like the inner book like, isn't stapled to the cover. So this serves as like a larger map that you can use. Uh, there's also other maps on the book, and as usual, illustrations. This is 1980, this one. Um, so this seems to be set in, yeah, a tournament in the slave pit. So that sounds light and breezy. <laughs> so very combat heavy, it looks, this um, campaign, which I get the feeling is how it was back in the day. Like there was some elements of the role-playing, but the main focus was the combat, whereas I feel a lot of campaigns these days it's kind of the other way around. Yeah, it looks like you fight your way through a big dungeon for that one, which is pretty cool. Characters level four to seven. Now this one, Midnight on Dagger Alley. Now this, this is really cool. So <laughs> I'm also intending on running this as a stream, but I think it's fine to show it because as you will see, it's all hidden. And these little, it's got a little viewfinder to see through, to see the maps and everything. And like this text under here and oh, beautiful. This is just like, mm, I'm very excited. 
very excited to play this. So this is designed as a single player experience, so it's like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. So you pick a character to play as, there's a couple of different characters I believe. Are they on? Yes, so there's, you've got a human, a half elf and an elf. You can choose one of them and then you play through the story that you uncover as you go. It just sounds really cool. So I hope you found that interesting. I know I haven't exactly done much about Dungeons and Dragons on this channel before. Uh, if it's something you'd be interested in seeing more, do let me know. I will hopefully be streaming the single player uh, campaign at some point soon. I don't want to put a time on it. Um, I will try and do a really short video just to let you know when it's going to be happening on the channel. Uh, but if you head over to the Twitch, if you're not already following there, uh, that's where it will be. The larger campaign may well be on the Twitch, might be on a friend's Twitch. We will see what we end up deciding doing once the uh, the party has been gathered. So we need, it says a minimum of six player characters, six to eight, which is massive compared to uh, what you normally get in uh, fifth edition D&D, which generally recommends like two to five players for a campaign. So this is gonna be interesting to manage over a stream <laughs> with potentially nine of us all um, connecting. So uh, technical issues abound, I'm sure. <laughs> So hopefully that'll be soon and hopefully I will be getting more regular game reviews up on this channel. Um, life has been very busy with moving house, buying house and all that life stuff that's just kind of sapped my energy for making things, I guess. Um, but hopefully there'll be more of that soon. Um, so yeah, bit of a different video for you today. Hopefully more videos to come. Let me know if you want to see more D&D stuff. Twitch will be linked in the description. I'm sure I've forgotten something else, but hopefully see you soon.